So welcome to the latest episode of Down at the Barns. And uh, please subscribe to the channel. We've got quite a few subscribers now, but the more the better. And uh, you can keep up with exactly what we're doing. Um, so I want today to spend a little bit of time talking about the E-types that we're working on. So this is an old friend. If you go back to episode, probably episode two, maybe episode three, um, we were scanning an E-type Jaguar. This is that car. We've now had it painted. Uh, you'll see that the customer's gone for a very deep red with metallic fleck in it. Uh, lovely colour for, for, for what we're trying to do here. The original car, however, was grey. Uh, and the customers actually made the space frame at the front grey as a little bit of a, a throwback to the original colour of the car. So it's quite an interesting uh, contrast there. Also, he's asked us to make the battery boxes, pretty much all of the electrical uh, components that we put in there, grey as well. So it's going to be quite an interesting car when it's finished. Not quite sure how it's going to work out, but hey, um, we're looking forward to, uh, to being able to install all of that in. So now we're at the business end of the, uh, of the car, uh, and this is the motor. Uh, I think if we go back again to the early episodes where we'd scanned the car, we also showed you some of the CAD of um, the design that we were hoping to use. And this motor is 180 kilowatt, so what's that, about 250 horsepower, um, and 600 newton meters. And what that allows us to do is not use the gearbox, we can direct drive onto the prop shaft. But we also wanted to keep as much of the original drivetrain as possible. So we've made an adapter plate up that goes between the motor and the gearbox housing. We've taken all of the contents out of the gearbox uh, and just put shafts straight away through it onto the drive flange. So we then drive the prop shaft directly. Um, nice touch is the mechanical speedo drive. We maintain that in the car, so you can drive the original speedo. We don't need to go and buy a whole new electronic speedo or anything. It saves a little bit of cost, but more importantly, keeps the originality of the car. And then the other thing that's a nice touch is uh, the original mechanism for gear selection is here. Um, we can put electronic sensors on here to actually pick up when it's drive, neutral, and reverse. Um, so we, we can just put it into first to get drive, and then into reverse. Uh, to go backwards and then we have a neutral position sensor and that all looks and feels as the original car. Customers happy with it? I'm happy with it. So this is the rear suspension out of the red coupe that we're working on. Um, I think it's pretty well known this, this independent rear suspension. It's something that we really needed to keep in the car. Like keep the car as original as possible and this is a key part, fundamental part of the car. Um, so the customer wanted us to really just check it over. Uh, we've been through, handbrake mechanism is incredibly difficult to access when it's in the car uh, with these inboard discs. So we've um, checked all that over. Actually, it's been renewed not that long ago. Uh, we've taken the uh, rear off the uh, gearbox casing and had a look in, or the differential casing and had a look in there. That all looks good. It's got a limited slip diff in there. It's got a 331 axle, so it's perfect for what we want. So really, it's, uh, it's in good condition. It looks a bit grubby, but actually it's, it's, it's pretty good. The only things that we're going to actually uh, change on this, we're going to change the wheel bearings because they're a bit gone, and we're going to change the mounts. There's, they're cracking a little bit. So we'll put new, stiffer mounts on, and then it's ready to go back in the car. Tell you that I love you 100 times a day. You'll get tired. Of so, another mini. We've got quite a few minis on the go, which is lovely. Great little cars. A bit difficult to package all the batteries in. So, we thought we'd uh, get hold of um, one that's seen better days and actually use it to help us develop the best routing for things like the um, high voltage cables and things. So I think we're at the stage now where we've got the front end pretty much sorted out. Uh, we've got the motor installed, we've got the subframe all together, we've got the front battery sorted. So this is the rear end of the Mini. It wasn't quite what we were expecting, unfortunately. Um, 
So the car's got a little bit of interesting history. It came from South Africa. I think quite a few minis do. They're right-hand drive. They're in reasonably good condition uh, from a rust point of view. But uh, unfortunately, this one um, received a bit of a smack up its backside, which has been repaired quite badly. Um, it's got ripples in, in the wheel well. And then, to cap it all, in the container, it got struck on the back and has dented it quite a bit more. So we're going to have to pull all that out and try and get it back as, as original as we can. It's not going to be ideal. But the most important thing is how we route all the cables underneath, try and minimise the amount of um, cutting of the bodywork. We really don't like doing that. But unfortunately, we're going to have to do a bit in the back here. So we really want to use this. Um, the car's going to have a new floor put in the back there. So actually, it's quite a good... Um, uh, surrogate to use for now so uh yeah bit of work to do but over the next few uh, episodes you'll see us uh building all the components into this and then we'll take them out and we'll put them into a nice shiny new mini so i think you'll know by now that we love to uh solve an engineering problem and try and maintain the originality of the car I think we showed you that earlier with the uh, gear change mechanism. We kept it all original, um, so inside the car it looks the same. We've come up against another little problem that I want to share with you. We haven't got a solution yet. We've, we've kind of gone down two different routes, and really, um, let's show you the problem, and then later on we'll think about the solution. Um, so this is the heater box. Uh, goes onto the bulkhead, draws air off the front of the on it, blows it through the box in here and it's got control flaps uh, that are operated by levers inside the car. This is the heater matrix that's in the car. Uh, we've got a couple of choices really. First one is um, probably the simplest which is just to put a, a heating element, a PTC heater in there and run that off the high voltage system. Um, relatively easy, not particularly original. Uh, and we throw away most of the components and a little bit difficult for us to control. The other one that I'm actually liking is to put an onboard kettle in the car, run off the high voltage. Sounds pretty cool to me. That way we can keep the original heater matrix and we can keep all the original controls. And I think that's, uh, that's pretty cool, right? That's keeping the car as original as we can. It's one of the things that we really, really want to do. So uh, while we mull that over and get to a solution, I'm going to go and use my low voltage kettle and have a cup of tea. Coming soon, down at the barns, our special episode from Fully Charged Live Outside. We take a look at some of the other classic vehicles and have on display three of our own cars from Eco Classics, the Chisel, the 911 and the E-Type which is proving popular. But this is such a good looking car. You can catch up with all the previous episodes of Down at the Barns simply by clicking on the link.